<laughs> of course, that match was an instant classic. But, Justine, which match of yours wasn't a classic? Oh, you're way too kind, Robin. To point out that very real truth. Were you nervous at all? Me? Nervous? <laughs> of course not. I had that match on lock. In fact, I was always calm, cool, and collected from my first day in the ring to my sixth championship victory. The following contest is scheduled for one fall and is for the WWE Women's Championship. Introducing the challenger, Justine. And introducing the champion from Forest Lake, Minnesota, Molly Holly. your winner and the new WWE Women's Champion, Justine. Watching my first title win again? you topped it up so much on your podcast this week how can i not don't get me wrong it's a fantastic match i just figured you had it memorized by now sure but it's a tradition at this point is it my favorite aunt only aunt watch her most epic victories and now also stress about what i have to live up to in my debut at survivor series tomorrow night <laughs> uh, why are you laughing oh nothing just that if I didn't know better, I'd say you were nervous, which is super hilarious, because I know that I didn't teach my favorite niece. Only niece. To be nervous about getting in the ring and doing what she does best. Yeah. Especially not when she's been trained by one of the biggest legends in the business. If I'm being honest, there's really no comparison. <laughs> you really do manage to turn everything into a compliment about yourself, don't you? Of course I do. I'm a six-time women's champion. Would have been 10 if my career hadn't been cut short by injury. I get it. A main eventer and Hall of Famer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who had the top merch sales in the 2003 fiscal year. Okay, you've made your point. I should get ready for tomorrow. That's my girl. As the mystery SmackDown competitor, shouldn't I have been shuttled in secretly or something? The whole golf cart with the black sheets get up? Don't worry about it. No one knows who you are. Yet, no one knows who you are yet. Tom. Justine and LJ too? It's so good to see you both. Same here, Tom. Wait, do you even still go by LJ? Man, it was always a hoot and a half having you backstage when you were a kid, dressing up in Justine's gear, being her shadow, her little Justine. 
But suppose you're not eight anymore, huh? It's fine. But I am trying to get known on my own here. I've heard. Good thing you're debuting tonight. The secret's pretty much out backstage. A few more hours and it'd be out to the entire WWE universe. You doing something here tonight too, Justine? Nope, just here to support my niece's big moment. Come on. Surely you'll find some way to steal the spotlight. <sighs> Molly. Justine. Wow, I I've got a... I, I, I better go check on the, uh... Yeah, I got no good reason, but I'm gonna leave now. I heard you were working backstage these days. Beat sitting at home, talking to the internet. It's called a podcast, and it's very popular. But I'm not here to resurrect old rivalries. Would you really call it a rivalry if there's a clear conclusion and undisputed winner? I was actually here to greet our newest WWE superstar. Wish her luck. She doesn't need luck. And let her know that I'll be working with her to get her ready for her Survivor Series debut this evening. Is that all right? No, that's great. I'm so excited to be here representing Team SmackDown. Great. Get settled and then let's talk. Justine. Please don't make things more difficult for me on my first day. Besides, you two were friends once. Sorry, you're right. It's just... Well, you know what she did. It might be ancient history and there's no reason for her to mess with you, but... Be careful with Molly, okay? I'm gonna go say hello to people. You all right? I'm all right. I'm ready. Yeah, you are. <laughs> I love you, kid. You'll do great. Hi, I'm... LJ, little Justine. Yeah, I overheard. How oh, precious. Yeah. I was actually going to say I recognize you from NXT 2.0. Ava Moreno, right? You had some great matches with Cora Jade. I didn't realize you had gotten drafted to SmackDown. Guess your famous WWE legend aunt hasn't been able to get you up to speed on everything. Honestly, we've been pretty busy prepping for my debut. I'm a little out of the loop on everything else. Who's your match with tonight? I don't have a match on the show tonight. Not all of us are able to skip the line, LJ. Did I do something wrong? What's with the attitude? Let me lay it out for you. A girl named Ava works her whole life to be the best athlete she can be. Excels at some things naturally, puts in the time to get better at the rest. Gets signed to WWE, continues to grind at the Performance Center doing everything the WWE way. Makes a mark on NXT 2.0, wins her matches, and gets signed to SmackDown. Sounds pretty great, right? What's your point? Some of us work hard. Some of us work harder. And some of us, LJ, get to waltz into Survivor Series and get put into a match that the rest of us, those of us who have done everything by the book, would kill for. My aunt is a legend, but I'm good at this. I got here on my own. I'm not just some nepotism signing. <laughs> got here on your own? We'll see what happens tonight. Maybe you are good, and you'll prove that. Regardless, I haven't been given the same opportunity on this brand to prove how good I am. So excuse me if I don't play nice with little Justine, the legacy hire. Sorry I wasn't able to check in with you sooner. It's always nuts backstage before a major show. And I lost a full 20 minutes to Happy Corbin, who wanted to practice a stand-up routine on me. Luckily, Xia Li overheard and protected me from his bad jokes. How are you doing? Feeling good about tonight? Honestly, I'm ready. I've trained my whole life for this. All right. Let's take that confidence, earned or not, and channel it into a great debut. For what it's worth, despite my history with your aunt, it really is my goal to help you succeed here. You guys have some history, huh? That's a conversation for another day. Stick around here long enough and you'll have history with everyone. Alliances, rivalries, heck, we even have our fair share of weddings. Although those rarely seem to work out. But let's talk about your debut. 
I've got your custom gear ready. Custom gear? What do you mean? Honestly, I get it. I wouldn't want to debut in it either. No, I mean I have no idea what you're talking about. Huh. Not sure how this didn't get to you, but WWE management asked that you debut in a look that honors Justine's legacy. So they've made gear inspired by what your aunt wore when she won her first championship. Not that that specific match would be the moment I'd choose to commemorate. Justine got lucky. But I brought my own gear. I designed it myself. Besides, I'm not sure if I want to use my aunt's image to establish my own. I want to make my own mark. Listen, despite my personal feelings, it never hurts to get a rub from a WWE legend. It's also probably not wise to go against management on day one. But I know it's important to stand on your own two feet around here. Ultimately, the decision is yours. What do you want to do? I love my aunt and she taught me a lot, but if I'm going to make it here, I need to make my own mark. I'm going to wear the gear I designed. All right, we'll see how management reacts. Standing your ground can really go either way around here. But if you're determined to make your own mark, you better have the performance out there to back it up. Go get changed, it's go time. Kick to the midsection. She certainly has the confidence of her aunt. Looks like she's setting up for the Justine Jammer. She's putting her own mark on an old classic. Not if Charlotte Flair has anything to say about it. You only have one chance to make a first impression, and this one might include a hurt ankle. And Rhea's taking advantage. Riptide! Covered by Ripley! Rhea got her. With the elimination, Team Raw now has the advantage. What a letdown for the Blue Squad. She definitely didn't expect to be out so early in this match. The top rope mishap and apparent ankle injury played a key role in that. And it looks like Charlotte Flair is determined to add insult to injury. Wait a minute, Hall of Famer Justine is here. We haven't seen Justine in a WWE arena for over a decade. One thing is clear, the WWE Universe is thrilled to see this venerated six-time women's champion here tonight in any circumstance. And it looks like Justine is just as thrilled to see them. Things might not have turned out how she wanted for her niece, but she's loving this crowd. I'm just hoping that Justine can get her niece on the right track. After this debut, she certainly needs some guidance. Did you hear that pop? What, the sound of my ankle popping or my career imploding? Oh, how is that ankle? Or more importantly, how's that ego? Ankle's okay. Ego, that's another story. You really went for it out there, huh? Didn't hold back? I'm the niece of one of the most venerated WWE legends of all time. I needed to make my own mark and stand out. I still do. You need to take your time and not overthink this. But you're still learning, and regardless, Charlotte acted out of line. If I was medically cleared for in-ring action, I would put the queen in her place. Believe me, I'm mad about it. But I'm not sure that Charlotte did anything you wouldn't have done. Nah, but one of the perks of having a career-ending injury is getting to apply unrealistic standards on the next generation. Why do you think I liked training you so much? Right. <laughs> Listen, I don't want to leave if you need to talk, but I got word that WWE management wants to chat before we head out. Something about the buzz online, whatever that means. You okay? I'm not, but I will be. No one ever said this would be easy. Just gotta work out the kinks. That's my girl. I'll find you in a bit. But what people forget is that for someone to win, someone else has to lose. It is better to win, though. Of course. Actually, speaking of winning, I have a few developments that Ruthless Digressions listeners will be thrilled to hear about. Oh. Care to share with those listeners or your co-host? Like I told my niece at Survivor Series. Patience, Robin. Patience. So... I know I didn't exactly get the best start, 
But I've got my head on straight now, and I'm ready to go. That's great to hear. What do you have for me tonight? Now, here's something that's less great to hear. WWE management thinks that after everything that's happened, we should take a beat before we put the spotlight back on you. Don't worry. I took your advice to heart. I'm okay with starting small, out of the spotlight. I'm not expecting to main event right away. Good, because you won't be. I'm going to level with you. Backstage sentiment is not good right now. You may be a SmackDown superstar, but you've got an uphill battle if you actually want to be on the show. So my match tonight is... Non-existent. Ah. What can I do? I don't want to just sit in catering. No one does. But this will all blow over. My advice until then? Find some way to make an impact. Be so good in the ring that they can't deny you. How am I supposed to do that if I can't get a match? I said I couldn't get you a match on SmackDown. There are other opportunities to wrestle. Actually, I can pull some strings and get you on main event. You'll need to find an opponent, though. Most of the roster is pretty busy with commitments on SmackDown, and I don't have time to play matchmaker. Pretty busy or pretty mad at me, from the sound of it. Yeah, I may have heard those rumblings. Although, have you met Ava Moreno yet? She's pretty new to SmackDown, too and also would have something to gain with a good showing on main event. We've met. I'm not sure she wants to work with me. Neither of you have to work with anyone. You just have to show up and fight each other. Get her to agree to that, and I'll set up the match. If there's some sort of beef between you two, lean into it. No one said the match had to be friendly. Well, if it isn't little Justine, I would say I'm sorry how your big debut turned out, but I don't like to lie. What do you want? Let's cut to the chase. I want a match on main event. Molly said she can get me one if I find an opponent. It sounds like getting that exposure could help both of us. Are you interested? Sure. Great. That was actually easier than I thought. Oh, but let me be clear. I want a match on main event, but not one against you. I want to make an impact here in WWE and make my matches count. It doesn't help me at all to defeat some jobber. What did you just call me? If I wasn't perfectly clear at Survivor Series, I like people who've come up the right way and paid their dues, not nieces who get handed special treatment because of what family they're a part of. And if that wasn't enough, I certainly don't like you after you proved me right and made a mess of things. Regardless of what you think of me, I don't see how just sitting around and complaining is going to change anything. I know as well as you do that no one else in the locker room is going to help you. You want a match with me? Prove that you have what it takes when you have to work for an opportunity. Pay some dues and stop waltzing around expecting special treatment. I don't waltz. We can agree to disagree. LJ. Someone's been busy. I'm not just having matches for your benefit. And I don't super appreciate your social media commentary. I don't really care about the motivation. Besides, I've realized something. What's that? Having a handful of matches is not the equivalent of putting in years of work at the Performance Center. You know that thing you have to do if you didn't grow up with a famous wrestling family? The so-called dues you've paid over the past couple of weeks are pretty insignificant. Ugh, you're backing out of facing me on main event? I didn't say that. Because I also realized I can harness how unfair this is for my own good. Even if you can't benefit from your pedigree due to your overwhelming lack of talent, there's no reason why I shouldn't. And like it or not, and I do not, Having a match with you, LJ, will increase my standing in the eyes of the short-sighted, legend-obsessed WWE management. Especially when I win. So you're in? I'm in. But I can't just squash you on main event. 
If we want people to stand up and really take notice, we're gonna have to have one banger of a match. So don't hold back. I know I won't. You're determined to make this personal, aren't you? <laughs> if it encourages you to try a little harder than you did at Survivor Series, yes. Fine. I'll ask Molly to set it up. We can settle this in the ring. That's literally all I've been asking to do. Ruthless Universe? You know I'm not one for spoilers, but I have it on good authority that the next episode of WWE's main event is going to be can't miss. So don't miss it. Come on, you don't get a WWE official. It was clearly an accident, Corey. But one that it looks like Ava is willing to take advantage of. Drop Tobo under the chair. A chair, a down referee, and an opportunity. What's she gonna do? Looks like both these women are ready to play dirty. She's going to use the chair. Ava with a bit of a tribute to Eddie Guerrero. And now the referee thinks she used the chair. It's a disqualification. It may not be the ending to this match we deserve, but it's the one we got. I can't imagine either of these two women are terribly happy with the outcome. I don't know, Cole. Looks like Ava might be. And at the end of the day, it's still a W for her. Well, pretty pleased with how that match went. Of course you are. You cheated. Pretty sure the ref saw you cheat. LJ. But I didn't actually do anything. You, of all people, should know it doesn't matter what actually happens. It only matters what others, in this case the ref, sees. Or think they see. Me, of all people? What does that mean? I told you I would make the WWE Universe stand up and take notice. You planned this from the start, didn't you? Maybe not this exactly, but I knew I had to use an opportunity against you to make a statement. Didn't go exactly as I planned, but lucky for me, you don't even know how to cheat right. And now, everyone's talking about the victory I claimed over little Justine! Ava's right about that. It's the most buzzworthy main event match we've seen in a while. And not just the finish. You two are really going at it. It's got so much attention that management wants a rematch. Yeah, a fair one this time, I hope. Let me prove I'm better than her. I'm not faulting you for it, but don't pretend you weren't about to use that chair before Ava outsmarted you. And this one will be no DQ, which means no more shenanigans. That's more like it. I think I've proven my point. I'm better. I guess you can keep up with me when I'm having a bad day. But better? You must have lost count, LJ. We're even. We both have one win and one loss. Ava's right on that point. <sighs> of course you'd be on her side. Do you really think I have it out for you somehow? Ava's right. As far as WWE is concerned, you're square. So, if you really want to settle the score, this needs to be a best out of three series. At least that's what management thinks. Fine. I'll beat her on the next main event, too. They'd actually like you to have the final match on SmackDown. On SmackDown? Are you serious? That's what I said, didn't I? Then I can't wait to beat her on SmackDown. Oh, calm down. Act like you go here. Just one thing. The show's already been booked and is pretty tight. I could only get you a little time. So it's officially a five-minute time limit match. My recommendation, if you want to finally settle this, someone better win quickly. It's like I've always said, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. And did you see the finish of that match? What a victory! In fact, it's a day of victories for this whole family. 
Not only did my niece triumph in her first match on SmackDown, it's finally time for that big announcement I've been teasing. As you know, I recently appeared at Survivor Series, and it seemed that impromptu moment scratched an itch that the WWE Universe didn't even know they had. After some talks with corporate, we've come to an arrangement, and starting next episode, Ruthless Digressions will be an official WWE podcast. It'll be all the same content you love, just with a little more WWE oomph behind it, including a brand new studio set so we can record video for all our exclusive interviews. Move over, Broken Skull Sessions and Steve Austin. There's a new podcast host in town, and it's me. I can't believe it. Off the distraction. And this is exactly what this superstar wanted. She wanted to cost her rival the match and did just that. Well, I hope she's proud of herself. Dana Brooke, the 24-7 champion, looking confident tonight. She's been doing a lot of talking. From behind! But apparently not enough watching her back. And just like that, there's a new 24-7 champion. And a new superstar who's got to sleep with one eye open. Yeah, there's nothing like holding that title. You never get a moment to relax. Speak of the devil. And Dana Brooke might not be giving up either. The new champ better find a good hiding spot while she catches her breath. You wanted to talk to me? I heard the rumors and I wanna be in the tag team Money in the Bank ladder match. Tag team? Money in the Bank? What are you talking about? Ah, uh, never mind. It's already the worst kept secret in WWE. But did I miss something? Are you in a tag team now? No, but since when was that a barrier to entry? Seems like WWE's whole deal is putting teammates together at the last minute for matches. Not all of them even like each other. <laughs> Touche. All right, I can get you an opportunity. Yes! To qualify. Ah! And don't think I'm going to play tag team matchmaker. Most of the women on the roster are looking for a partner to swipe right on so that they can win the briefcase and challenge Asuka and Tamina for the titles. I don't have time for it. Find a partner and I'll get you in the qualifying match. Now that, I can do. Thanks. Just make the most of it. Winning the tag championships would be no small accomplishment. Well, this pair certainly has something to celebrate, qualifying for the first ever tag team Money in the Bank match. It was a huge win in their... What was that? Someone said help! Oh, my God! What's that she's under? A fallen lighting rig? Help! How does this kind of accident even happen? Help. Do you really think this is just an accident, Corey? Well, what else could it be? This tag team's too new to have enemies. Oh, well, we hope she's okay. We'll keep you updated on this developing situation. Uh, uh, hold on. Oh. Can't wait to get this space back. Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> Lift! <laughs> Why is this so heavy? <sighs> that good? Nah, we gotta get it closer for pickup. Honestly, I'm just glad that you weren't the one who got hurt. Can you imagine? Taken out by a lighting rig. No, luckily recovery's only a few weeks. Too late to help me for the tag team money in the bank match, though. Even a small injury can mess with your head. Believe me, I know. Did they ever figure out how that thing fell? Unclear. Seems like dumb bad luck. For me too. Finally figure out who to partner with and now they're not even cleared to compete. It's such a bummer. We were just getting started together. You know, I always loved watching the tag matches the most when I was on the road with you. And those tapes of you and Molly tagging together weren't bad either. Ah yes, your new best friend, Molly. 
She's not my best friend. Don't you want me to be on good terms with management? Fine, you're right. Lift. I think those championships are so aspirational for me because WWE finally has them. After the women's titles were introduced in 2018, tag matches started to seem even more important. Ow! Excuse me? What did I do? No shade to the current generation, but I grew up watching women compete on TV in tag team championship matches. You did? I have clearly failed to teach you proper wrestling history. Yes! Did you think I grew up in a vacuum and one day said, I think I'll become a professional lady wrestler? No! I watched and was inspired just like you. For me, it was seeing the main event women's championship match at the Brawl to End It All in 84 that gave me the bug. But the tag champions back then were formidable too. I would have loved to see the superstars of today defend against some of the women I grew up idolizing on TV. So what happened to the titles? I don't know. Appetites changed. Management started putting their attention elsewhere and opportunities dried up. The championships, and a lot of the women themselves for that matter, got pushed aside. You did your stint in catering. You know what it's like. Yeah, not the best when you're fighting for limited opportunities. <laughs> you have way more opportunities than I ever did. If I had the chance to accomplish what you can... You accomplish plenty. Take even the current tag titles. Like you said, I never even had a chance to compete for a tag team championship when I was in WWE. They weren't a thing then. In fact, I heard you're in need of a partner. What do you say? Can you imagine? You and me standing as champions at WrestleMania? The Mysterios can't have a lock on this family thing. <laughs> Very funny. Like you could get in the ring again. Did I tell you that Molly said I can't even pick my own replacement partner? Oh? Your best friend isn't letting you call the shots? Oh, shush. No, everyone's clamoring to team up with me since I've already secured the Money in the Bank opportunity. So they're having a fatal four-way on Raw to decide. Interesting method. You know, on second thought, maybe I want to keep this desk. So many memories. Justine! Kidding, kidding. <laughs> Let's go. One... Two, three. Seriously, you? Yes, me! What can I say? I'm a winner, baby. Molly, come on. I can't work with her. What about the stuff you said when you were asking to be put into this match? About tag teams being thrown together at the last minute? not even liking each other. This seems pretty standard for WWE, if I'm being honest. But what about the stuff you said about picking my tag team partner carefully? Don't use my own words against me. That's what I was trying to do to you. <sighs> anyway, there's no need to argue. This has been decided. And I, for one, am very excited to find out whether the two of you can coexist. Won't be a problem for me. Speak for yourself. With our history, it's a problem for me. Cool it. Don't forget, if you two set your differences aside and pull this thing off, you both win. And so you guys don't blow it and embarrass me, I've set up a training session before the actual Money in the Bank match. You can work out your issues and also practice your ladder climbing abilities. Meet me at the PC. Where'd Trish go? Certainly wasn't expecting to see her tonight, but I'd love to see what she thought of our matchup. She peaced right after the match. We could never stand to spend that much time together. Didn't you see any of our singles matches? Not the biggest fan of me. But she came to team with you? Yes, she did. Because despite our differences, we respect each other. And we respect what happens in the ring. That's my point. You don't need to like each other to win. But you guys lost. I'm not saying we took it easy on you, but we're WWE legends. I'm choosing not to process that last comment. I don't want to ruin this moment of getting a victory over you and Trish Stratus. Fine by me, but you get my point. You two are as ready as you're going to be. Just try not to kill each other before the money in the bank match, okay? 
and no promises. Couldn't I technically win the tag team titles alone? I know it would be harder, but possibly worth it. Oh, shut up. Listen, I know I'm biased in terms of what outcome I'd like to see tonight, but I can't get over the fact that we're previewing a women's tag team Money in the Bank match. Women didn't even have a regular Money in the Bank match until 2017. Boy, what I would give to compete. But since I can't, I will say that my niece has been putting in the work. I will admit she's not with the partner I hoped she would be competing with, but as they say, you win some, you lose some. In any event, it'll be an interesting evening. And I'm sure the tag champs will be watching carefully. After weeks of speculation, we finally know the winners of the first ever tag team Money in the Bank ladder match. Wonder what Asuka and Tamina think about all this. They're confident champions. This is no real threat to them. I'm not sure the briefcase holders are on the same page. Hopefully they can get it together enough to cash in that contract. We'll see. We're seeing the same aggression here that we saw during that pre-match attack last week. It's Raquel Rodriguez. Apparently, she's not a fan of how Shotzi was used to prove a point. Raquel and Shotzi haven't always seen eye to eye, but these two came up together in NXT. I guess that counts for something. Either that or she just wanted in on the fun of this no DQ match. All this is perfectly legal. And so was that. Ava Marino from behind. This team may not have cashed it in yet, but that briefcase is proving to be pretty handy. Shotzi with a roll up. Ava slides the briefcase in, and she nails Shotzi. Look at it capitalize. One, two, three. She got the win. I guess the briefcase did turn out to be the determining factor in this match. And some teamwork, too. Something that we haven't seen yet from this pairing. They may not have chosen each other initially, but maybe this tag team does have what it takes to make good on the promise of that Money in the Bank briefcase. <sighs> that was unexpected. You defending me in the ring? Certainly was. I was talking about Raquel. We're tag team partners. It's not like I don't like you. You have literally told me before that you don't like me, Ava. Fair point. But I didn't know you. You were just some new girl coming in to take my spot. I wasn't trying to take anyone's spot. I was trying to start my career. Sure. But your journey to WWE was very different than mine. You started with the WWE legend in the family. Your support system was in the business already. You even knew some of the crew. I had none of that. Things have always been harder for me, and it was difficult seeing you get an opportunity right off the bat. <laughs> Did it help that I crashed and burned in my debut? <laughs> it certainly did not hurt. I can't control what family I was born into any more than you can. We're bound to have different perspectives and experiences. You're right. Probably explains why I find some of the stuff you do so annoying. You know, besides just the fact that you're the entitled niece of a legend. <laughs> you're just kind of mean generally, huh? See? Now we're really getting to know each other. Which is actually a good thing if we're going to work together on this cash-in. Let's finally have that talk and figure out how we're going to do it. Speaking of... Ava, where's the briefcase? I thought you had it. No, I don't. You don't know where it is? I do not. Well, this is not great. We need you to go to Shotzi and Raquel and tell them to give our briefcase back. They're not listening to us. Hate to say it, guys, but WWE briefcase law has always been pretty vague. I'm not sure if possession is nine-tenths of the law, but it's certainly a fractional value of some sort. But they stole it from us! Stole it! Ava, I'd expect you of all people to understand a bit of deviousness. But both of you, save your breath. A decision has already been made. WWE management has decreed that you'll face them for the briefcase in a match next week. That's not fair, Molly! Didn't say it was, but that's what's happening. 
then we're going to use everything at our disposal to make sure they never try anything like this ever again. Shotzi ducks, nails a discus forearm. This could be the moment that officially puts the briefcase in the hands of Shotzi and Raquel. What's Shotzi doing? It's the stolen Money in the Bank briefcase. It said it was in a safe place. I guess the safe place was under the ring, Byron. The original briefcase winner counters. She's the one who's taking advantage of the referee distraction now. This match is over. Well, it's over, but that's probably not the ending Shotzi and Raquel had in mind. And the ownership of the Money in the Bank briefcase is officially returned to the original winners. Hopefully now they can put this behind them and officially set their sights on cashing in for the Tag Team Championships. At the very least, I bet they'll keep better track of the briefcase from now on. Okay, that was fun. And look how far you've come. Got the timing right this time, and the ref didn't see a thing. If you had used the chair that fast in our match, I would have been done. I still don't like it, but I see your point. Fighting dirty is necessary sometimes. That's my girl. Knew there was a little rebel in you, LJ. And now that's settled, we still need to decide how we're cashing in our briefcase. Our? Nice. And it's about time we finally have this conversation. But who gets to decide how we do it? You want to face me in the ring again? Whoever wins gets to call the shots. I'm ready. Nah, not when I'm starting to think you might not be the worst person ever. Generous. <laughs> Let's take out our aggression on other people who are arguably worse than you. A beat the clock challenge. One of us takes Raquel, one of us takes Shotzi. Whoever wins faster gets to decide how we cash in. Hmm. I love it. I'll face Raquel. Then I'll take Shotzi. Best of luck, partner. Another decisive victory from the tag team champions, Asuka and Tamina. Just a second, Byron. We're getting some breaking information on a possible security issue. It seems that the reported theft of the tag team Money in the Bank briefcase has been linked back to the champions, Asuka and Tamina. Well, that's one way to maintain your momentum. They don't even have any evidence. They need to get their hands off the champs. What's going on here? That security guard found the briefcase. It was never stolen to begin with. Hang on, that isn't a security guard. That's Ava Moreno. And Ava's partner is behind the champs in the ring. This is all a plan. Are you kidding me? This is foul play. Call it what you like, but it looks like they're cashing in, and I, for one, think it was a brilliant strategy. Asuka and Tamina just defended their titles and now must compete again. I can't believe it. We have new women's tag team champions. And what a cash in. Its theatricality was only exceeded by the skill these two competitors showed in the ring. Does that mean these two superstars and champions are finally on the same page? At least tonight they are, Saxton. And it looks like the new champs are soaking in every moment of this championship celebration. And after what they faced to get here, mostly each other, they deserve it. A rare sight these days to see this superstar by herself. Yeah, I thought she and Sami Zayn were glued at the hip. Look out! Looks like Liv Morgan has caught her alone and is taking advantage. Really impressive what these two were able to do tonight. Absolutely dominant and looked great doing it. Not that you're biased. Not at all. Looks like Carmella's not done with her. Toss to the outside. That's completely out of line. Come on, Saxton. Carmella was just helping her get her on her way. That's ridiculous. And now they're out there showboating. They earned the right in the ring. If you don't like them showboating, don't lose. After all these post-match shenanigans, you have to wonder if this is over between these four. victory over Asuka and Tamina, these champs just put those doubts to bed. 
I agree, Corey. They look poised to hold these titles for a long time. It's Bree and Nikki Bella. The Bella Twins are here. Simultaneous Bella Busters. What the hell do the Hall of Famers want with the tag champs? I don't think this is about the champions. It seems to be all about their tag team gold. Whatever their motivation is, the Bellas made quite an impact here tonight with their shocking return. We haven't seen them in quite some time, and now they just cut to the front of the line for a tag team title opportunity. Don't ever underestimate the Bellas' cutthroat mentality. There's a reason they're Hall of Famers. I don't think the tag champions will be underestimating them after this. Unbelievable. I didn't realize you were here tonight. Uh, last minute podcast business. Sorry for not giving you a heads up, but I'm glad I was here. It's just like the Bella Twins to show up and ruin everything. You okay? Yeah, and it sounds like you have something in common. They're also upset about never having the chance to compete for the tag championships. Don't say that. I have nothing in common with them. Those two ran me out of WWE. Didn't your injury run you out of WWE? My injury just sealed the deal. When the Bella Twins arrived, it was the beginning of the end. Suddenly, no one was interested in the women as athletes and competitors. They started telling me I was supposed to be a diva. You should be thankful you don't have to deal with that. I still don't know if that's exactly the Bella Twins' fault. I wonder if you'd feel that way if your matches kept getting bumped for bikini contests or schoolgirl matches, or pillow fights. The Bellas may not have been the whole Divas division, but they were a big part of building it. Honestly, I always liked the Divas. Seems like your real issue was with WWE management. Did I ever tell you I was supposed to give a retirement speech? After I found out I could no longer compete, I was going to have the chance to go out on Raw and have a proper farewell. I really wanted to thank the fans for supporting me throughout my career and tell them firsthand why I had to leave. So what happened? It was cut for time. WWE decided to cover the Bellas going on a double date instead. Wow, I'm so sorry. I never had an issue with the Bellas, but knowing that definitely puts them in a different light. And I'm certainly not a fan of what they did to us tonight. I'm not going to let Nikki and Bree push us around. You know, WWE has been requesting that I book the Bella Twins on ruthless digression so they can do press on their various frivolous projects. I blew them off because of, well, everything. But maybe it would be a good idea to set up an interview. Would be a real shame if anything happened to them while they're recording in the studio. I understand what you're saying. Anything can happen in a podcast studio. And it won't be a pillow fight. I'll talk to Ava. It does seem like both of you always manage to keep busy, even before your surprise return. Groundbreaking reality shows, a podcast of your own. When you were in WWE before, you each held that Divas Championship, but whoa. Oh. Smackdown is our show now. Stay in your lane. That's enough. You've done enough. Break it up. What the hell are you thinking? Get them out of here, now! Nikki counters the strike. But Justine doesn't seem content to just sit on the sidelines. Justine's doing everything she can to keep her niece in this match. What's Natalia doing out here? And why is she helping the Bella Twins? Nikki nails the spear! And it's over! Natalia's distraction is enough to help the Bellas help themselves. In any event, I'm sure we haven't seen the last of this rivalry. Not with that ending. And not with the Bellas continuing to stir things up here on SmackDown. We still don't know why Natalia got involved, but it looks like Justine is even madder about it than her niece. It's no secret that I've butted heads with both the Bellas in the past, but I am done with the shade being thrown on them and the WWE Divas division. 
I'm not an idiot. I know what some people have said about the women involved in that era, both behind our backs and to our faces, or in some people's cases, hiding behind a keyboard on social media. But the truth is, the Divas division was made up of talented competitors, all looking for their opportunity to shine, just like the women of today. As Divas, we had to fight for everything we got, whether it was a chance to speak or a two-minute match. I would have thought a superstar who did her fair share of time in catering would understand taking advantage of every possible opportunity. Make no mistake, I am damn proud of how far this women's division has come, but I'm also proud of where we've been. It's time to respect the women who helped pave the way for the women's revolution. That includes the divas. And if anyone has a problem with that, they have a problem with me. Wait a second, what's happening? I didn't think the Bella Twins were here tonight. The Bella Twins aren't, but the tag team champions are, and it looks like they're having more than a little fun imitating the Bellas. They're dressed just like them, too. I don't think it's meant to be a tribute, Byron, although they certainly must have studied their tape to get the Bellas moves down like that. It's a catchy song. Kind of makes me want to dance and swivel my hips like the Bella Twins, too. Please refrain, Saxton. No one wants to see that. And I think Natalia and Beth Phoenix will want to do a lot less dancing and a lot more fighting when they get out in the ring. And I don't blame them. It's disrespectful to make fun of the former Divas like this. Well, that's a score we have to see settled here tonight. Thanks for coming. Of course. I'm ready to win some singles gold. But what was so sensitive that you didn't want to talk at SmackDown? I've been thinking. I want to make sure that your singles run is a success. I want to manage you. That's great. And you need to distance yourself from Ava. What? I've been watching your matches. You're the real star. If you drop the baggage, you're sure to get a title opportunity. Besides, you know that tag team partnerships never work out in the long run. It's only a matter of time. I know people around here turn on their partners like there's something in the water, but tag team partnerships can work out sometimes. Look at the New Day. And how long collectively has any of them been a singles champion? Okay, I see what you're saying, but I'm not sure if Ava is a problem. Molly says management has been really happy with our tag team reign. I'm sure she'd let me pursue the SmackDown women's title too. Molly, fitting you'd bring her up considering she's a great example of why tag teams don't work out. I'm speaking from personal experience. You know what she did to me. Everyone knows Justine. Molly turning on you in the middle of the ring is a classic WWE moment. <sighs> so then everyone knows she's a snake. A snake who has yet to book you in a championship match, despite all the work you've been doing. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if she's holding you back on purpose. My relationship with Molly is different than yours. Molly's been helping me. Listen, I'll talk to her. I'm sure if I ask, she'll set me up with a championship match. <laughs> we'll see. Hey, I was actually looking for you. I wanted to talk to you and Ava about planning your next tag championship defense. Representing the division as the tag team champions has been great, but I actually wanted to talk to you about a singles run. Isn't there still one open slot in the Fatal 4-Way for the SmackDown Women's Championship at day one? I'd love to have that spot. You and the rest of the roster. Besides, you're doing a great job as one of the tag champions. Might not be best to split your focus right now. I honestly didn't think this was the case before, but are you trying to hold me back? Excuse me? I'm sorry, but I have to bring it up. Justine is convinced that you have some ulterior motive against me because of your history with each other. She thinks that since you betrayed her in the ring, I shouldn't trust you. Seriously? Betrayed her in the middle of the ring? Do you really think that's all there is to the story? It happened on Raw, Molly. 
You turned on Justine during the middle of a match. Everyone saw. Are you going to tell me that didn't happen? No, I did that, but geez, don't believe everything you see on TV. What's that supposed to mean? I only turned on Justine because I caught wind that she was trying to turn on me. She was politicking with management backstage to get them to break up our tag team. She was so convinced she was a single star, she was prepared to throw me under the bus. But then I found out what she was up to and beat her to the punch, literally. That's what really happened? Listen, as far as I'm concerned, this is ancient history. What incentive do I have to lie to you now? And I'll be honest, it didn't end that badly for me. Turning on Justine? Let's just say that making a move like that in WWE is one hell of a statement and lets everyone know you mean business. Wow. Like I said before, I don't have any ill will towards your aunt today. Enough ancient history. Let's talk about your next tag title defense on SmackDown. And I'll think about putting you in the fatal four-way at day one. Ava Moreno with the tag. She and her partner appear to be a well-oiled machine. That's so fast, Michael. Shayna immediately has Ava's number. I can't believe this after the damage Shayna took. It's becoming clear who's pulling the weight on this team. Anyone can have a bad night, Corey. Ava's almost within reach. If her partner can tag it, she might be able to turn this match around. She jumped off the apron. Moreno's tapping out. This is over. We have new women's tag team champions. Looks like she wanted to make a clear statement. At the expense of the tag team championships? If Ava kept competing like that, losing was inevitable. Better to make a move now. Speaking of making moves, she just used the title to attack her partner. Former partner, Saxton. There's no question this partnership is over. Though I don't think the new champions appreciate having their victory moment co-opted for this personal issue. You gotta wonder why the former champ didn't help her partner. They could have talked through their issues and might have kept the championships. We'll never know, Saxton. Choices were made here tonight. Like it or not, it'll be what the entire WWE Universe is talking about. Tonight, the WWE Universe has been promised an explanation for what happened at day one. But what would explain it, Michael? Be quiet and we might find out. My road to WWE hasn't been like most. Ever since my debut, I've had advantages simply because of my family. I know that. And you, the WWE Universe, has accepted me sometimes because of that. And sometimes in spite of that. Then there's Ava Moreno. From the very beginning, Ava has put me down for who I am, even as she used it for her own benefit. Ava, I pulled you up with me onto main event. You even had the gall to make me work for it, even though it was my name getting us a match. You took advantage of me, Ava. Our whole partnership, which you weaseled into, might I add, was never about being a real team. It was always about you using me. <laughs> I realized that at day one, when you were reaching out of the ring trying to use me again. And so I made a decision. I'm not apologizing for who I am anymore. <laughs> I've already dropped the dead weight. But tonight, I'd love to introduce the WWE Universe to my new manager. Someone I think you already know. It's WWE legend Justine. We guess that she might be advising her niece on her career in WWE, but this makes it official. 
A new manager and a new attitude from the former tag team champion. I'm not sure if I agree with her updated outlook, but I certainly want to see what comes in this latest chapter. I, for one, think it's a great outlook, Cole. She's looking out for number one. I wouldn't be surprised if we see her at the very top very soon. Do you think she's going for the SmackDown Women's Championship? Where else would her interest lie? Justine wouldn't waste her time with anything less. The champion better keep her head on a swivel. Dewdrop, watch out. What's all this? <laughs> Did you really expect me to manage you out of the regular SmackDown locker room? I made a request, and management set us up with our own private VIP area. This is pretty awesome. Don't act so surprised. You need to start thinking like a champion and main eventer. Do you really think Hogan or The Rock got ready with the rest of the roster? Being on top means asking for, or taking, exactly what you deserve. As your manager, I worked it into my rider. You mean my rider? Sure, whatever. Anyway, are you ready to talk next steps, or do you want to get settled first? I'm ready to be champion. Let's go. Great. I talked with Molly and set up an opportunity for you. A match against Charlotte Flair. Your move against Ava worked. They now see you as a singles competitor who can hold your own against a WrestleMania main eventer. Prove them right in your match against Charlotte. You got me a match with Charlotte? I'm impressed. Of course you are. I don't mess around. The Queen hasn't faced this challenger since... Ava from behind! She's not going to let her former partner get to this match. What we're seeing here is raw aggression and clear revenge for what happened at day one when these two lost the Tag Team Championships. WWE officials may be breaking this up, but I don't think we've seen the end of this. LJ. Little Justine. That nickname's even more fitting now that you're working with the only thing that got you into WWE in the first place. Did you really think that after what happened between us, I was going to just sit back and stay quiet? You and your aunt must be stupider than I thought. I never weaseled my way into anything in my life. You approached me for a main event match. When we first teamed up for the Money in the Bank match, I not only ensured our victory, but then I had to practically drag you out of your comfort zone so that our cash-in wasn't doomed to fail. I will admit one thing, though. When you turned on me, I was kind of impressed. I didn't think you had it in you, LJ. Thinking for yourself for the first time in your career. But what I realize now is that you had just went back to having your aunt do all the thinking and work for you. So if I've got a fight with both of you, fine by me. You were always nothing more than a knockoff copy of her anyway, little Justine. And there you see Ava Moreno, who targeted her former partner tonight in a surprising attack. Uh, Looks like she's the one who's getting targeted now. What did she expect? Uh, uh, Ava with a reversal into the ambulance. And Ava is taking out all of her aggression on her former tag partner. Do you blame her after what she did? I don't. You think you're better than me? That I'd lay down and take it when you... Look out! That car came out of nowhere! This has escalated quickly. We need medics on the scene immediately. Justine? What the hell? I think her niece is just as shocked as we are. Looked like you needed some help. Here are your winners. L. Mainly Ben, La Cagarita Mocha, and Odyssey Rift. What a battle, what a war. Strong showing from both these teams tonight, but congratulations are in order here. It's a rare privilege just to compete in a War Games match, so to win one must be an amazing feeling. Bravo to this team. It took incredible fortitude to get the job done tonight.
breaking news. I have just received word that visiting WWE Chairwoman Stephanie McMahon was the victim of a shocking attack at the hands of the SmackDown Women's Champion, Dewdrop. No motivation for this attack has been given, but WWE officials were able to restrain Dewdrop before Stephanie was seriously hurt. I'll update the WWE Universe with more news when I have it. It's about to open. It's been the best kept secret in WWE since it was announced. Everyone's on the edge of their seats to find out who's inside. The wait is almost over because the mystery entrant into the elimination chamber is about to be revealed. It's Justine, WWE legend and Hall of Famer Justine is the mystery entrant into the elimination chamber match. One of these two women will be the next SmackDown Women's Champion. But how? We haven't seen Justine in the ring for over a decade since her career-ending injury. She certainly doesn't look injured to me, Corey. And she also doesn't look like she minds that the woman standing in the way of winning a championship is her niece. Justine immediately on the offensive. Setting her up. And down. It looks as if her niece was completely caught off guard by this. She's getting dominated in there. Wait a second. We've seen this before, but not in a very long time. It's vintage Justine here tonight. The Justine Jammer with the cover. One, two, three. It's over. We have a new SmackDown Women's Champion, and I can't believe I'm saying this. It's Justine. Justine is the new SmackDown Women's Champion. There were so many names thrown around about who was going to be in the dark pod, and Justine wasn't even on the list. Her niece must be shocked. I think the entire WWE Universe is shocked. I'm having flashbacks to 2002. Simply unbelievable that we are witnessing this right now. What a moment in WWE history. Our brand new SmackDown Women's Champion is here to address the WWE Universe after her shocking return and victory at Elimination Chamber. So, I have a little bit of an announcement to make. I've been medically cleared. Surprise! You know, I thought I had closed the books on my WWE career. But being around here lately reignited a light I thought had gone out. As I got involved, Coming back into WWE, first with my podcast, and then as a manager, I started to wonder. Edge, Lita got second acts. Why not Justine? The more I gave, the more I realized, you need me. You need me because you deserve to see me finally reap the rewards of the path I trailblazed to fulfill the promises that I wasn't able to keep when my career got cut short to... What the hell? <laughs> I was wondering when you would show up. Figured you would, given how much you like to ride my coattails. What are you talking about? Why didn't you tell me you were cleared? And why haven't you called me back? Would you have paid attention if I had? After the way you laughed at me when I suggested we team up for the Money in the Bank tag team match? After you never thought to ask me how I was doing whenever I mentioned my doctor's appointments? I'm beginning to think I should have set up those lighting rigs to fall over on you instead. You did it. Why wouldn't I? Because I'm an old, washed up, past her prime legend. Girly, you best not insult me, because I taught you everything you know. LJ. Too bad you don't have the goods to back it up. I was proud when you decided to wear your own gear for your debut and make your own mark. But it was probably then that I started to realize you don't have what it takes to push our family name forward in this business that I'd have to do that myself. What are you talking about? What are you talking about, LJ? You followed me around like a shadow your entire life and you don't understand. When you hesitated in using the chair in your main event match with Ava, 
What? Were you afraid the chair would bite you? <laughs> You've always lacked an edge. I would never have made that mistake. Because I've always known exactly what I want. What I needed to do. In a world that was five times as hard and seven times as brutal for me. I tried to help you. But even as your manager, you were just blindly following everything I told you to do. Seriously, child, think for yourself. You know the difference between you and me, LJ? I've never been content walking in someone else's path. And I never had the luxury. I've always had to make my own. My head is spinning here. Justine's not only back, but she's put a target on her niece. Justine certainly drawing a line in the sand here tonight. How do you even respond to a betrayal like that from a member of your own family? All right, I think we're about to find out. And I have a feeling that whatever she has to say, it could have some big ramifications for the WWE Universe. You know what I find curious, Auntie? That for someone who's so adamant about creating her own path, you're pretty consistent in bringing up the past and what you've already done. Boo-hoo, I'm Justine. It was so hard for me. <laughs> I don't doubt it. But I also don't see any other WWE legend standing in the ring right now telling a sob story about unfinished business. Maybe that's because they accomplished what they set out to do. Makes you wonder, doesn't it? If you failed because you were so mistreated, put upon, and unlucky with an injury, or if you failed because you just don't have what it takes. You shut your mouth. No, nah, I'm done listening to what you have to say. And I'm done asking for your advice. The only thing I'm asking for, the only thing I'm demanding is to set the record straight. You think you're so powerful that the only thing that stopped you back in your day were forces beyond your control? some sort of big bad that had it out for you, then I'm going to tear apart your past and prove that it wasn't them, whoever you think of them is. It was you, Justine. Weak, powerless, a lot of talk and no action. And then, then I'm going to tear you apart. And at WrestleMania, take the SmackDown Women's Championship. Did we just see a WrestleMania match being made? Uh, I think we did, Saxton, and I gotta admit, it's not a matchup I thought we'd ever get on the grandest stage of them all, and I also don't think we've ever seen a statement that powerful from this superstar. I've got to agree, Corey, and if Justine's going to have her past torn apart in any way, well, let's just say there's a lot to unravel there. I thought what you said in the ring was exactly on the money. And I'm happy to help you take Justine down by, how did you put it? Tear apart her past? That's it. I think Justine's plan is to steer clear of you before the WrestleMania match, which is official, by the way. But if you want to get the upper hand, you might not have to take the fight directly to Justine anyway. Taking some steps to remind Justine about her biggest regrets will go a long way. I have a few ideas, and I've already made some calls to get a couple of other WWE legends to help, too. I gotta ask, are you just helping me so that you can get back at my aunt? Oh, there's definitely an element of revenge to it. Do you know what it's like for people to think I'm the villain of my story? But I also meant what I said to you on day one at Survivor Series. I'm here to help you. Justine's so stuck in the past and her grievances that she's forgotten her obligation to help the next generation, even her own niece. Ain't that the truth. Are you ready to get started? I do have one idea that involves a certain red-haired, moonsaulting WWE legend. 
But with the amount of grievances your aunt has against this company, there's definitely more than one way to approach this. You talking about Lita? Who else could it be with that description? Let's start with her then. What are you thinking? One thing your aunt could never shut up about was that Lita got the first women's cage match in WWE, not her. A steel cage match with Lita would certainly rub that in her face. Lita's just going to agree to that? No, but if you lure her to Raw by making her think she's getting another Raw Women's Championship opportunity, confront her backstage and I bet you can get her in a match. After her near miss with Becky Lynch last year, she still got an itch. Molly tells me that you're trying to add fuel to the fire of your fight with your aunt. I don't know if I can help, but I can give you a tip. Justine always hated my cowboy hat. So I should wear a cowboy hat? No. Let me say more words. She hated my cowboy hat because it reminded her of Trish Stratus. Your aunt always resented Trish for being the face of the company. Trish always got more buzz, more press. Even now, Trish's face is on the side of the production truck, not Justine's. Wasn't Trish also a seven-time women's champion? She sure was. One more than Justine's six championship wins, which your aunt especially resented because before Trish came to WWE, she was a model, so Trish had to learn the business from the ground up. Justine always thought Trish got special treatment compared to someone like her, who worked in other promotions for WWE. What do you think? Is there something you can use there? I'm here on NXT tonight with a big announcement. I'm proud to share that the superstars of tomorrow will be honoring the legacy of the greatest WWE women's legend of all time. I'm announcing the first ever Trish Stratus Battle Royal. Well, the main event is next week. We're kicking things off tonight as I personally honor Trish by wearing this out to the ring for a special match on NXT 2.0, the old WWE Women's Championship. This is the same championship that Trish won seven times over the course of her remarkable career. Even my Aunt Justine didn't hold it seven times. It is going to give me such stratisfaction to wear this tonight, in homage to the greatest WWE legend and women's champion ever, Trish Stratus. Of course, it's obvious to anyone with a brain that my niece's efforts to undermine me, to undermine my legacy, are really the attempts of a weak, scared little girl. I just want to talk. Seems that we have an unexpected guest today. You may know her from her recent humbling loss to me at Elimination Chamber. My niece. Or as she always asked to be called growing up, Little Justine. So, LJ, I've got to ask, how does it feel to be nurtured by the best in the business and still be such a letdown? You know, you were the best in the business, Aunt Justine. I'm sure you didn't make the trip here to tell me what I already know. But isn't that what you said you want? For someone to give you your due? See, after the initial shock of seeing you at Elimination Chamber, I've had some more time to think. And you're right. You were never given proper credit for what you did and what you accomplished. So you did join me to make my own point. What's that you said on SmackDown? About having to survive a world five times as hard and seven times as brutal? In the moment, I think I would have said you were making excuses. But now I know you're exactly right. You did work harder to get less. You should have been the main event week after week when you were in WWE. Sure. They threw praise on your name after you retired when management decided they needed to add another woman to the Hall of Fame. 
or now when they want to get a Legends ratings bump. Fans buy into that nostalgia but forget what it was really like for you. How they treated you when you were on the roster. What do you know about it? You don't understand. But that's just it. I do understand. You've been teaching me since my first day in WWE. And you know what I finally really get? Everything that you've complained about, that you're mad at, for all that you blame management or other things beyond your control. It's always been me who's been your real target because I'll never know the limitations that you did. I will get to push myself in ways you never could, have opportunities that you never would have been given, and see how far I can really go. And you? Justine, you're a legend. The best of her time. Maybe could have been the best of all time if you had a level playing field. But the fact that you'll never know when I will, that's what you'll never forgive me for. And that's what's going to allow me to replace your legacy with my own. You ungrateful piece You're a of... You're selfish, self-centered, only thinks for herself. Because I'm the only one I could ever count on. Looks like we have something in common then. Because I certainly couldn't count on you. You don't deserve your talent. It should have been me. But it's not you, Justine. It's not you. It'll be me at WrestleMania. I've still got it. <laughs> sure, you've got what's left. Enjoy it while it lasts. But me? <laughs> I'm just getting started. Should be standing tall with the SmackDown Women's Championship at WrestleMania. I'd have called it possible, but unlikely, Cole. What a match. And there's no question whose moment this is. Whatever and whoever may have defined this superstar in the past, she's now cemented her own legacy within WWE. We could be seeing this image at WrestleMania for years to come. Wait, what's happening? I'm not sure. Can Justine be trusted here? I don't believe it. It seems that even Justine's small heart grew three sizes today. If these two can get over the differences after the rivalry they've had, then anyone can do it. Look out! What the hell? The new champion was just ambushed from behind! It may be the end of this rivalry, but this champion story in WWE is just getting started. Here's your winner, and still the SmackDown Women's Champion, 